Good morning, Crafty Chicks. This is Grace here at The Comfy Nest with Grace. I'm coming live as part of the seven days of summer fun. Um, this is a, a, a creative collaborative between six other creative women, business owners, and me. And we decided um, one, day, one person every day for a week would go live creating some summer fun activities and projects. So that's um, day five. I'm um, day five. We've got two more after me. I'll tell you who they are in a few minutes or at the end. Um, but today, as part of Summer Fun, what I want to do is create a really cool frame to capture one of your favorite summer memories. Now, I know our summers are all looking a little bit different this year. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? But um, most of us have our phones on our hips and we're snapping shots of either our children or our puppies, or maybe um, our spouses as we're going out and we're doing the, the summer fun things that we love to do, whether it's bike riding or hiking or sitting in the hammock with a cold lemonade, like whatever it is, um, we still can capture some great memories of our summer with the people who matter the most to us. And I'm gonna show you a way that you can display one of those photos in a really cute way. So let me say hello to everybody. Let me get this um, feed up on my iPad because I want to make sure I can see comments once I turn this camera down. Um, so good morning. Happy Saturday morning. I don't usually come live on Saturday morning, so I'm actually really curious to see who's out there. Who's out there? Who's watching? What are you doing today? You know, is anybody going to be tuning in because it's Saturday morning? So what do you have planned for your weekend? What's going on in your world? All right, I found the feed. That means I can get comments. We already have 29 people on. Whoa, sir. Whoa. That's pretty cool. Okay, hold on. Oh, someone said hello from South Carolina. I'm going to go back. Now listen, at the Comfy Nest, hold on. At the Comfy Nest, I have a prize basket. And the way this works is, um, as you guys are on with me, you're on live with me, and I'm sharing the project. You could be also sprinkling or sharing the video. And what that does is it just shows this video, this demo video to other people, whether you send it on your timeline, whether you send it in a message, wherever you want to send it. Um, but as we get more viewers, I add more names to my prize basket. And then once a month, twice a month, I pull name a name or two out of the basket and those folks get some happy mail, some craft supplies, um, and or maybe uh, a finished good that I made, something that I made and I'll send it to somebody. So we're already at 25. <laughs> We're already at 25. If we hit 50, I'll add two names. But let me get one name in the basket. And I want to say hello to everybody. Um, Sam says, I'm getting ready to come home to Big Devil's Lake. Sam lives just uh, close to me, about uh, an hour east of me, hour and a half east of me. She's coming home this weekend. Hey, Denise. Hey, Jenna. Thank you for sprinkling with love. Thank you. Thank you. Denise says, me, me, pick me. <laughs> It's going to be a feeling of 107. Oh, I, we checked the weather this morning. 73 is our high today. It's going to be a beautiful day. But 107 sounds very hot. Maybe it's a cold drink and inside, <laughs> or at least for part of the day. The time to get out is morning and evening, right? You know that. So hopefully you have a good day, even with all that summer sun. Hello from Oklahoma, Miss Pamela. Hello. Hey, we got a first time watcher. Hello, Linda Miller. Welcome. Um, if you guys want your name to get into the prize basket, um, say hello. Just comment. Say hello. Let me know where you're coming in from. I randomly pull from the comments a name to put into the prize basket. Dana says, pick me. That's a good thing to say. <laughs> Thank you for sprinkling, Dana. Uh, hello, Connie. And hello, Tracy. Oh, Barb says 109 in Mesa, Arizona. Oh, what on earth? What a difference, right? Between North Dakota and Arizona. Thank you, Pamela, for sprinkling. You know, when you guys sprinkle, like it says, share it. Right, right above your name, it tells me that you did that. So um, I can see that Denise Irish has shared. She says, my daughter is in Paint Party Headquarters. Are you? Yes, I am. I'm a member of Paint Party Headquarters. Heidi is my coach for Tribe. I'm taking, I uh, just finished that workshop, Tribe. Are you in North Carolina? I'm in North Dakota, Jen. I live in North Dakota. <laughs> Jenna says, please pick me. Oh, we just hit 50. I need two pieces of paper. Thanks for telling me, Trisha. I can count on you. It says top fan right above Trisha's name. It says top fan. Um, and all that means is she has a lot of activity on my page when I go live, when I'm posting things, she's commenting, she's 
sharing. She's participating. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate every single one of you. Hey, Diane. Hello, hello. Jen Glenn says, I'm a newbie. I love to know that. It's so good for me to know that because I can give you a warm, warm welcome to the Comfy Nest. I hope you enjoy the project today. Diane says, I'm new. Welcome. I'm so excited to have so many new. And of course, all the loyal crafty chicks. So happy to have you. Um, you're all welcome to join the Crafty Tick Chicks group that I have. It's a free craft community, and you're all welcome. Connie says, I'm in my craft room in the cool basement. Smart chickadee. She's a smart chick. Happy Saturday, Tracy. Welcome new people, Diane says. Dana says, yay. All right, I'm picking some names. Jenna Watkins, <laughs> the comment that's getting you in the prize basket. Let me write your name first so I don't mess it up. Is please pick me. That's the first comment I saw. I'm going to scroll here. I've got my phone that I'm broadcasting from. And then underneath, underneath here, I have my iPad. It's a bigger screen and it shows me all the comments. So that's where I'm pulling the comments from. So if you see me look down, that's why. Um, so we got the next person that's getting picked to get in the basket is Jen Glenn. I'll tell you the comment that just got you in the basket, Jen. Jen Glenn, your name's going in the basket. And the comment is... I'm in Raleigh, 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 North Carolina. I love the Outer Banks. I've been to the Outer Banks once in my life and I'm trying to convince my family to do our family reunion down there, but I'm from Massachusetts and most of my family still lives in New England. Uh, I live in North Dakota, so I gotta travel no matter what. I usually travel to New England to see them. I'm trying to get them to go down to the Outer Banks. Oh, I really wanna go there again. It looks so pretty. I wanna go where those wild horses are and see them roaming around on the beach. Um, let's see. Hello, Miss D, first time watcher. All right, you guys, seven days of creative play. I've been calling it seven days of summer fun. Every day, one of these creative, fantastic, smart, creative ladies, it's all ladies who are doing this with me. We're all creative business owners. We're doing a live demonstration and workshop, basically free workshop um, on Facebook. And we are also giving you a free gift. So Pay attention. Let me actually see if I can share the free gift here. I, I, I tried to make it. Yes. Okay. I'm posting it right now. If you want to sign up for my free gift, which is going to, I'm going to show you how to make the fabric flowers that I'm using in today's project. If you want to learn how to make these, if you don't know how you want to learn, I have a video demonstration that I can send to you. Just sign up using that link. Okay. And then I can send you the free gift. Okay. So every day, all seven days, all seven ladies are giving you a free gift. So make sure you're tuning in. I have posted on the Comfy Nest page. Every time someone goes live, I share it here. So if you just scroll back, you'll be able to find the other ladies. Um, and you'll also see the schedule. I'll post the schedule, the full schedule again today, just in case you want to go and um, get to each one of their, um, their business pages and grab those free gifts. Um, like, for example... Tomorrow, Sarah from Art Ventures Minnesota is doing a watercolor freeform flowers and she'll give you a, a free gift, um, which is a template. And then Melissa, my good friend Melissa from the Graceful Barn on, um, she's coming on on Monday. She's going to paint, uh, she loves whimsical animals. She, that's what she paints and she's gonna show you Daisy the cow and she's giving you the free template. So make sure you're tuning in. Yay, Linda, I'm so glad. She said, I just signed up right before the live. Hi, Kim in Southwest Iowa. Jenna signed up. Awesome, awesome. Hey, in stormy Wisconsin. We had some funky storms too. We had some funky storms last night. Really high winds. I was down in the basement. Actually, I hid in my son's room, my 15 year old's room. <laughs> Go into an interior room in the basement. That's my son's room. So I went in there and I was appalled at the, the condition. <laughs> I stripped his bed so I could wash all his sheets. I was down there, I was cleaning. He's gonna be appalled that I was, I was, I went through, he has these little bins in a shelf and I was going through them and he had candy and food. I'm like, good gravy, what a, does anybody have teenage boys? What a mess he left in there. Anyway, I was tidying up his desk. What else was I gonna do while I waited out the storm? Uh, Dana, if you wanna sign up for the free gift, I'm gonna, a free gift, I have a video instruction on how to make these fabric flowers that I'm gonna use today. Let me show you the project. I have this, I love these three part palette boards that you can get almost at any craft store. You guys, I feel like I need to lift you up a little more so you can see this better. Just give me a second. Um, those three part palette boards, I'm a huge fan of them. I use them a lot. 
You can get them at Hobby Lobby. You can get them at Michael's. I think I got this one at Crafts Direct, which is my favorite store, hobby store. It's in Minnesota. They have two stores, both in Minnesota. It's about six hours for me, but anytime I drive through there, which is about once a year, I do go to the store and I stock up and I bought about six of these. So the back of it, what I like it is has the hangers um, you can hang it either so that the pellets show horizontally or vertically because it has three hangers on it. So you have the choice of which way to position it. I always do horizontally. So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to put on top of this, this pretty shaped frame. It's just one of those simple birch um, wood frames. I think they're like a dollar. Honestly, I think they're very, very inexpensive. I got this one from Michaels. We're going to put this here. And then I'm going to use, I'll use my fabric flowers later. Those are for later. Um, but I'm going to use, we're thinking summer, right? So bright, bright colors. I'm going to decoupage a piece of fabric in the middle. I'm going to paint. I'm going to put the flowers on here. And then this whole thing has been inspired by a picture of my son. Now, let me show you the picture of my son. <clears throat> Oh, I didn't get the names in them. Oh, I did two names. Let's see. Do we have 75 people? You guys, if we hit 75, let me know so that I can get more names in that prize basket, okay? I need help because it's a lot for me <laughs> to check how many people, to see your comments, to um, do the project, to drink the coffee. It's all just, it's a lot on a Saturday morning. <laughs> it's just a lot. Anybody else feel my pain? Listen, I've been up since seven and I was getting ready for this and my husband got up at nine and he sat down with some toast and I, I sat down with a cup of coffee and he said, you know, we said, good morning. How are you? How'd you sleep? And he said, so you're going on in 45 minutes. And I, my eyes got really big and I said, oh my gosh, I can't believe that much time has gone by. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go get ready. <laughs> Here's the picture. Here is the picture of my little guy, Gannon. This is Gannon. Um, he's 13 years old. And this picture, I printed it off my regular laser printer at home. It's just on a regular piece of paper. I do this all the time because I don't, I don't order photos anymore like we used to. I remember we used to bring your film into Kmart or wherever to get them processed to your local um, photo place. Now, all my fo photos are on my phone. I, I sent it over to my laptop. I printed it out on my printer. It's a gorgeous color printer. Like, it has all the colors. So... Look at how vibrant those colors are, you guys. Look at his jacket and his shirt. He has one of those SPF shirts on, right? Water shirts. And look at the colors on them. So that's what inspired what I'm going to do here. So um, I took the picture and I like placed it on the board. And this is how I choose color schemes, you guys. I'm kind of giving you behind the scenes of my brain. Um, Tracy says I have a 25-year-old. Oh, my gosh. You've been through that then. And he says, you lift me up. Oh, yay. Hearts, hearts. That's so good to hear. I'm so happy to hear that. That makes my day. Just warms my heart. Um, yes, the, the link is in the comments. It's also here. I can do it again probably. Once I, once I had copied it, it's easy for me to paste the link in the comments. There we go. There it is again, I hope. There it is again. Let me see if I can pin it to the top. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out all this um, no, I don't think I can pin it from here. Anyway, you got it now. I put it twice in the comments and it's in the description of the video if you want to sign up for the video instructions on how to make these. Uh, 24 and 25 year, 25 year old girls. Miss Denise says, hi from Florida, Laura. 76, dear. Thank you, Tracy. So you guys, I have so much fun when I go live, you guys, because, oh, and you guys can see. I don't, you don't necessarily need to see my laptop because that's giving you too much too much to look at. Let's do that. Is that any better? Oh, let me get another name in here and then I'll pick and then we'll get started. Kim Palmer. Kim, your name's going in the prize basket. Great ideas. That's the comment that's getting you in, Miss Kim. All right. If you guys are new, make sure you go um, when I'm done here, go to the Comfy Nest with Grace business page and make sure you follow and you like it so that if I choose your name and you win, I can actually tag you and find you um, to, to give you the prize. Thank you, Diane. She says, I always love your ideas. Okay, so here we go. So this is the picture that inspired everything. I'm going to show you how this works for me. 
I know I wanted a Mod Podge a piece of fabric on. I like the texture. You could use paper. I have used scrapbook paper. Um, but I like the texture that a fabric gives. It looks different than a paper. Um, I always use matte Mod Podge. Uh, to decoupage, almost always. I would say almost always, not always, but almost always. It depends on the circumstance. Um, but I, I almost always use matte Mod Podge to decoupage, whether it's paper or fabric. I like the texture that fabric gives. So in looking at my photo, I try to choose colors, like the bright yellow is in his jacket. So I try to choose colors for the project that coordinate with the photo. So the photo is the inspiration. Took the photo. I grabbed all my, like, like a, a stash of fabrics that I had, and I just started playing. At first, I thought I wanted red. So I took one of my red fabrics, and I put it back here. And that's not right. That's not right. I got a lot of orange here. Um, the red just clashed a little bit. So that's what I do. I literally take my fabric scraps. If I want to use a piece of fabric, you do the same thing with scrapbook paper, because usually they're patterned, right? So another thing that I look for in terms of fabric, because then I thought, oh, everybody loves buffalo plaid. Buffalo plaid's real good. No, it doesn't work with this picture. It just doesn't work as much as I love the buffalo check. Not working. So that's what I did. I took my little, like, stash of fabrics, and I started, I pulled my yellows, because I have a lot of yellow in here. So I pulled out some of the yellows, and I held them up, and I landed on this one, because it's nice and bright. It's got a neutral See, it's got just a little little circles on it, so it's got a neutral pattern, um, as opposed to this, which is not neutral. This is not a neutral pattern. It's very ornate. It looks like French provincial to me, um, because it's got all those swirly. I don't even know what you call them. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Not neutral. I want whimsical. I want um, bright and playful is the look I was going for. So that's the fabric. So in my mind, you guys, as I'm looking at this picture and I'm thinking about my project, I am actually thinking about the whole project and thinking, what is the look that I'm going for? I want whimsical, I want fun, I want it to bring back a cheerful memory from my summer. I just love this picture because it's such a bright, gorgeous day. He's 13 and he asked his dad, can I drive the boat? I was like, eh. I get a little nervous when the boys, my, my husband said, sure. You know, he wants to teach. He's, we've got to teach them these things. They're getting older. Um, and they've done this a couple of times. So he got behind the wheel, which is like so cute because it's usually dad behind the wheel. Got behind the wheel with his little life jacket on and the colors are all gorgeous and I just snapped the picture. So this, I want to remember this. This makes me happy, this picture. Find something that makes you happy, a memory, a picture that makes you happy. This is the inspiration. I want whimsical, fun, bright cheerful remind me of that fun day that we had out out on the lake that was the whole inspiration i printed it out on my printer in a four by six um because that's what my little um frame is so we're going to do a layered frame thing here so that it makes the it, it's going to make the the picture pop even more so let me get my fabric ready i just wanted to tell you that's kind of how i go about picking colors um, I'm going to put all that fabric aside because I don't need it on my table. I'll put the picture aside for now. Let's get this fabric cut. I'm going to cover this middle section with the fabric, and then I'm going to paint. Oh, I didn't tell you my paint colors. So I got the yellow. And then for the paint colors, look, bright, cheerful, and matching. Okay? I looked at the photo. Yellow in the middle. Sorry, I forgot to tell you about the paint. And then I picked colors that coordinated with his what he had on i just picked two other colors that coordinated and i'm just going to use those on the board okay so let's get the fabric done first i i, I kind of tell you my thought process um so that you guys know that's just what i'm doing now i'm going to write on this so i know where to cut it so i'm going to flip it over so that the writing's on the back i don't want it to show on the front but you see it's ragged here it's ragged i actually used this same fabric to coordinate to make the top flower. This is the same exact fabric. I cut it with scissors and I cut it not straight. I just used scissors, I didn't measure. I just cut out what I needed from the fabric and that's all in the video instructions that you'll get if you sign up for that free gift. I'm just gonna use the palette. 
the um, grooves in the palette to just tell me about how big I need this piece of fabric. You see what I'm doing? It's just a pen. It's gonna be on the back. I'm giving myself two lines. Whoops. I'm giving myself two lines. Even if they're just um, impressions, it's helpful to have those two little lines. Now, they don't have to be perfect. This, we're going for playful and whimsical, so don't worry about getting your rotary cutter out and your cutting board. You can if you want to. If that gets you all excited, go ahead and get it all out. I don't do that. I just, I just kind of eyeball things, you guys, because I'm not about perfect. I'm about fun. <laughs> that was kind of a funny comment. I'm not about perfect. I'm about fun. I'm about making crafting fun and exciting, and I want it to bring joy to your heart. I don't want it to stress you out. I don't want you to be worried. I don't want you to be like, um, you know, my sister and I talk about this a lot because she's a perfectionist. I, I consider myself a recovering perfectionist. Um, and I tell her all the time, like, just stop it with the perfectionism. Just let it go. It's so much fun to create when you when you let go of your linear thinking and your perfection and you just, just create and have fun and play with colors and paints and... Um, different texture mediums and decoupaging and glues and glitters and oh I love it it's all so fun all right so I'm just eyeballing it doesn't need to be perfect this is gonna go here it's still too long I still have too much over here so doesn't need to be perfect but I do need to know where to cut it right so I got this line right here this it's kind of like finger pressing and quilting I'm just gonna give it a nice crease right there with my finger and you can see the little crease that just gives me an idea of where to cut it I don't care if it's perfectly straight if the edges if what I would say is um cut them if you're gonna cut them a little long would be the way to go because you can then sand off the edges if you need to okay so it's about right don't worry it's not perfect doesn't need to be I'm gonna get my mod podge and we're gonna mod podge this on oh, brand new one brand new Okay, how do you open this sucker? You know what I usually do, you guys, because I don't care. I stick my pen in there <laughs> or something sharp. I wipe the sharp thing off. I got my podge on it, and then I just peel it back. It's got that plastic. Look at it. It's still got a plastic lid there. Come on, people. Work with me, Mod Podge. Oh, is maybe that's dry Mod Podge. We'll see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm going over my garbage can. You can't probably see what I'm doing, but I'm over the garbage can. I'm gonna pull that out. It's like a plastic film. That's what it is. I was thinking maybe it was the glue itself. New bottle. We like a new bottle, of Mod Podge. Okay, I'm just gonna take. I have a couple of paintbrushes. I put <laughs> duct tape. Pretty floral duct tape on this brush. This is the one I always use for Mod Podge. I, I try not to mix the brushes that I use for Mod Podge. I didn't used to do that, but now I do. This is just, it was my least favorite brush. Honestly, that's why I picked it. It's got really stiff bristles. Um, and I don't really love them. So I just use it for my Mod Podge. You're going to get a nice coat of Mod Podge on here. I'll check comments here in a second, girls. I love chit-chatting with you. So, um, believe me, I'm not going to miss out on that, but I do have to get the project done too. <laughs> We're going to stick a nice coat of Mod Podge here. Did you know, tell me, have you ever decoupaged fabric? Just give me a yes or a no. Have you ever decoupaged fabric? It's fun. It's just like doing paper. It's the same process. You're going to get a nice coat. Of Mod Podge now just a little bit thicker probably than that than um, using paper because the fabric is going to absorb the Mod Podge okay so you do want to probably go just a little bit thicker get it on there and then slap your fabric piece on here okay now it's gonna end up a little longer I'm gonna try to even it out so that it's going to be a little longer and I'm gonna press it into the palette grooves so I start from the middle and I press out to get all the bubbles out. Okay, and then it's a little short right here. So I'm gonna just pull it down. Not the whole thing. It was just a little short, just cause I cut it and it's not straight. So it's got like a little groove that goes up. So I'm gonna cover that wood by pulling that down a little. And then I have some extra up here. So that's gonna get pushed into the grooves. Okay, now you could take, I just wanna make sure I have enough Mod Podge that that's actually sticking, it is. 
you could take a very sharp X-Acto knife um, or like your box cutting knife, you know, these things, or an X-Acto works. If you wanted to cut, I need to put a little Mod Podge on this corner because it's not sticking. I didn't get a little more on there. If you wanted to cut this, um, you could try to do this. It's going to have to be an awfully sharp blade. Um, this is why I pre-cut it so that you don't have to worry about this. Otherwise, putting my blade in here, what it's doing is it's pushing down that fabric so that you can't see any of the overage. Like if I have just a, like a like tiny little smidge of overage of fabric, it just kind of gets hidden down in there. So it's something sharp like an X-Acto or that knife is going to push it down. Now, I'm also going to Mod Podge the top. We're decoupaging it on here. And I want to Mod Podge the top. And it's going to give it, it's, it's still going to be fabric. I'm using matte Mod Podge, so it's going to give it a sheen. Um, you know, matte Mod Podge isn't completely matte. I mean, let's be honest. It says it's matte. It's more matte than gloss Mod Podge, but it's not completely matte. So it's going to give it a little sheen that actually looks quite nice. Um, with the fabric and the fabric is still gonna feel like fabric It's just gonna have a little scratchiness to it because it has the Mod Podge on top um, So you're still getting the look and feel mostly of fabric It definitely looks different than your painted surface and it definitely looks different than a piece of scrapbook paper or gift wrap or whatever else you might choose Tissue paper to mod you can decoupage all those things fabric you do the same exact process as you would anything else, and it just gives it a different feel and a different look because it's thicker. Now, I really like ragged edges of fabric. I like the ratty, ragged edges of fabric. So you got two options here, ladies. Um, on your edges, depending on how you cut your fabric, you may have some ragged things hanging off here. And you can leave them if you like it, or you can take same way you would do with paper, take your sanding block and just sand them off, right? So uh, when it dries, you gotta let it dry. And then if we want to, we can take the sanding block and get those little edges off. Now, I can see that corner is popping up too. I'm gonna put, stick a little bit more on that corner to make sure it really stays down. There we go. Now we can paint. Okay, it's coming together. This is gonna go here, so you can have this nice bright band of yellow hanging out but i'm gonna do now here's my picture um, i chose blue kind of matches the sky i chose green which matches what well, matches his shirt now the blue i don't you guys tell me blue on top blue on bottom i want to hear from you let's check um oh my gosh we already have 103 viewers what all right hold on i'm gonna have you vote and then while you're voting i'm gonna put two more names in the basket every time you guys do this Every time you do that, it brings more people on to kind of join us for crafty goodness and fun today. Um, and then um, the more we do that, the more people we have in increments of 25, the more names go in the prize basket. Okay, I need your vote. I know what I think, but I want your vote. Blue, blue sky. Should I put the blue sky on the top or blue sky on the bottom opposite? the blue sky with the green on top. The green matches his shirt, which is right in the middle. So you tell me blue on top or blue on bottom. All you have to do is type top or bottom. While you're doing that, I'm gonna add two more names. Thank you, Cindy, for sprinkling. Hi, Debbie Allen. Blue on top. I want you guys to just type in top or bottom. Where do you think I should put the blue? Top or bottom? Christine just jumping on. Glad I'm catching you. Me too, Christine. All right, I'm scrolling. I scroll randomly through all the comments that are there. With 100 people, over 100 people on, there's going to be a lot of comments, right? Make sure you at least say hello. Tell us where you're coming in from because then I can get your name in the prize basket. So next person who's going in the prize basket is, she is one of my craft therapy club members, one of my paid membership group members. Connie Ranky, your name is going in the basket. Okay, I randomly choose. Then I have, 
Here's the next name going in the basket, and the comment was 53. She was reporting in. Dana Graham, your name is going in the prize basket. All right, let me look at your votes. Blue on top, blue or bottom. I have, I know what I think we should do. Let me check your votes. Let me check your votes. Bottom, bottom, top, bottom, bottom, bottom. Bona, Bona says green on top, so that means blue on bottom. Tracy says blue on bottom. Trisha says top, bottom, opposite. Kim, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's exactly. Teresa says on top. Denise says on top. Susan says on top. Here's the beauty of this, you guys. Thank you for sprinkling Carla and Debbie and Jeannie. Or is it Jean? Minnick. Do you say it Jeannie or Jean? Regardless, it says Sharer above your name, and you told me that you sprinkled, so thank you. All right, so here's the thing about this, and I was talking about this last night. We did, in a, okay, you guys, in my craft therapy club, which is my paid membership group. Um, this was our project this month, was a shimmering mermaid, and this is the one I did, like, as my sample for them. Okay, uh, I'm going to get to what we talked about here in a minute. I love working with shimmer pastes and metallic pastes and all that jazz, but look what, last night, I'm not even done with mine, because it was, um, we were, like, you know, we worked for an hour and a half, maybe an hour and a half. I do one live workshop a month with them and then like bonus content and all that stuff. Um, this was last night's. I chose a totally different scheme of colors. Um, but check it out. I did the blues and the greens. That's what we were learning in the craft therapy club last night. And Connie is a member of the craft therapy club. And I'll tell you what our conversation was, but look at that mermaid tail. Look at the bottom of her tail. Oh my gosh. I'm not done. I'm still working on this one. Um, but listen, we were talking about how um, you can vote top or bottom, like, right? Like, it doesn't matter, top or bottom. Was it the, I think it was with you guys we were talking about this. But it's all good. Like, there's no right or wrong way to choose your paint colors and your positioning of things and the fabrics that you use. And it's all just your preference. And that's the beauty of the creativeness of it, right? Because all of our uniqueness comes out in the way that we choose to interpret a project. So you can copy exactly what I do anytime. I'm co completely honored and flattered if you do that. But if, you, if I, you know, ask you your opinion, should the blue go on the top or the bottom? If you truly like it on the top, you do yours on top. I kind of like it on the bottom because it offsets. It's opposite where the blue sky is. So I'm going to do it on the bottom. Now, I know that was a long-winded way to get to that, but what I want you to encourage you to do, and um, what I do in the Craft Therapy Club, my goal and really my tagline, like what I tell people, if they say, what is the Craft Therapy Club? I try to keep crafty women motivated, teaching them new techniques, like when we were working with all our shimmers and our um, metallics and our pearl lusters, right? We learn new techniques, um, while sharing in a creative and supportive community, right? Top or bottom, doesn't matter. Um, if you choose to do your mermaid tail with different colors than I did, I completely encourage that. Um, that's the beauty of the creative process, and it really needs to be yours. Um, craft, relax, repeat is my belief. We should craft, and it should make us relax and bring us joy, and then we should repeat that. We should just do that over and over again. <laughs> That's my, that's my little coined thing that I say. I have a couple of t-shirts that say that, um, that I've had made because I truly believe that crafting is therapeutic. That's why I call my club the Craft Therapy Club. And we get together as a group and we craft together and we support each other. And then the fun, fun, fun this morning, over the weekend, and over the, the this week, we'll see everybody posting their mermaids and they'll all, they'll be similar but they'll be different because everybody's going to choose different colors. Maybe they're going to do a different size. I gave them two different tracers with two different sizes of mermaid so they could choose a different size. Now, listen, I'm adding a little bit of water. Why? Because the palette board sucks up this paint. It's sucking it up. And so I want it to spread a little more easily. So see how much easier it is for me to spread? I just put a little dab of water, a little spritz from a little water bottle. That, there's a little tip for you. If you're working on a palette board and your, your paint's feeling ruddy and that it's not moving, I don't want to water down this paint 
Apple Barrel is pretty liquidy in general anyway, and I don't want it more watered down because I do a lot of stenciling. So I add water to the wood, to the paint on the wood, and then spread it. Now listen, I'm actually liking this with an imperfect, rustic looking paint finish. I'm gonna do the blue. See how I didn't get all the edges? It's not perfect, see that? I like it, I like that a lot. Let's see, I'm going for an overall look here. I'm gonna leave this as it is for now. I'm gonna put the blue on and then decide if I need to do more coverage than what I just got, if that makes any sense. All right, let me check comments real quick. Um, just be careful not to splash your picture. Yeah, my picture's over here. I think it's, thank you, Tracy. That's good. You're looking out for me. You girls are so good. All right. I'm just using Apple Barrel. It doesn't matter. Like the brand doesn't matter. The exact paint color name. I'm happy to share it with you, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> you pick your picture out and then you pull, hold your picture up against some of your paint bottles and you're gonna pick colors that coordinate and that really make your picture come to life. Okay, the picture, the picture, the picture will tell you what colors of paint to use. So you don't need to know the names of my paint. I'm, I'm super happy to tell you if you want to know, if you just like the paint color and you're like, man, I want that paint color, I will tell you exactly the brand. I get emails or messages all the time where you guys are asking me, hey, what color were you using the other day on that project? And I'm so happy to share that. So you feel free to message me anytime. But um, on this project but in particular, you really want the picture to like, not dictate, but to di like direct you and give you hints about what colors to pull and use with your fabrics, with your flower, with your paints. Okay, I'm really liking this like, okay, as opposed to painting it all on and then using your sanding block to sand back some of your color, I kind of like the way this is working out with just putting less paint on to start. And I purposefully um, made sure that my edges have less paint, right? Now I have a little bit of streakiness in here, so I'm gonna try to just get rid of that. I put a little paint on my paintbrush and I'm gonna just try to get rid of that. I don't want streakiness. I don't wanna see brush strokes. Okay, look, I like it. I like it a lot. You guys watch that movie Dumb and Dumber. He says, I like you a lot. <laughs> we quote that movie because I have two teenage boys that so we quote that movie a lot. Okay, look at my blue. Not completely on there. I like it. It's good. It's all good. If you like that look, then stop where you are. You don't, you don't, you don't have to put paint on the edges if you don't want paint. If you like putting paint on the edges so that you can get the satisfaction of sanding it off, do that. Like, do it. Do whatever works for you. I'm kind of digging that. And now I have three vibrant colors for summer. My, my fabric is still drying. It's still wet from the Mod Podge. It's still drying. While this is drying, I'm gonna put this down so you can see. Um, here's where we're going. I'm gonna remind myself this is gonna go here with this picture inside of it. I'm gonna actually cut this picture out and I'm gonna Mod Podge it to the back of this. So, so let's, let's get that part done. And for this actually, it's just faster. Oh gosh, where is it? I could use my paper cutter, which you know gives you a really straight line really quick. But because I'm a I'm a messy person, I don't know where it is. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut this out. There's a regular piece of printer paper. Took the picture from my phone. I actually shared it on my Facebook. And then I copied it, I went to Facebook on my laptop, copied it onto my hard drive, and then printed it. All right, this comes with just this little cardboard marketing piece in the window. It's a four by six, but it has this little fake family in there, <laughs> family of models, all those gorgeous people. I'm gonna Mod Podge this onto here because it fits perfectly in here, but I'm gonna do it to the back because I don't want any of that to show. So we're gonna Mod Podge this here. Now look, my picture is a little bit bigger than the, um, than the base. So here's what we're gonna do. Move this over, I had a little cloth under there. So this is a cutting mat, so I'm just gonna use my cutting mat 
let's make sure on the front it doesn't matter we're gonna lose a little bit of the steering wheel actually I want more of the steering wheel to show so I don't mind like losing this part so I'm going to make it flush like like flush on this edge where the steering wheel is and then what I'm gonna cut off is the stuff on the other side so you can use a rotary cutter for this. You can use an X-Acto knife. I find the rotary cutter the easiest, even with paper. Um, I know it's supposed to be for fabric. I used to quilt. I don't quilt anymore. I haven't in a long time. So I use my rotary cutters all the time for other things. And look at how fast and easy that was, right? I think it's easier than even uh, an X-Acto knife. Okay, now I'm gonna Mod Podge this on here and it's gonna be the perfect fit for what we need, right? Okay, let me get my tiny little, I don't wanna get Mod Podge on my cutting mat, so I got my little craft mat here. I got my Mod Podge still out. Let's get this picture on here. You could use a spray adhesive, and I actually, um, Elmer's Glue makes a fantastic spray adhesive for something like this. It makes it really fast and easy, um, but it kind of stinks. It, it's got an odor, it's an aerosol spray, and I, my, craft room is really tiny and I don't need that going on right now so as much as I love the product it's when I can use it outside that's when I use it I have used it inside here in the winter when I'm desperate um, but I, I try not to okay doesn't need to be perfect again don't stress yourself ladies about perfection just give it a nice press on there really I'm looking I don't want to decoupage. I'm not going to put a top coat. I'm not going to put a coat of Mod Podge on the top. I really just want to adhere this picture on here so I can put it in the frame. That's my goal. All right, let me get this down. My, my wood um, piece, the reason I have this here is because these make it like move around and make a lot of noise on my board. So if I put that underneath there, it, it helps to minimize that. Okay, now this will end up, it's going to dry it's adhering it on there. It's going to end up in here like this. Okay. Now, I don't want it plain wood color. I want to paint this too because I don't like the natural wood color. I like it, but I don't like it for this project. So I need to paint this. Okay. I've got my green. I've got my yellow. I've got my blue. I stop for a minute and I do a check because I haven't even decided what color to paint it yet. Here are my fabric flowers. This is exactly matching this. So the black one's gonna sit here, the yellow one on top, and we'll do this later. I'm gonna put something in the middle there. So this is what I'm gonna have, and I feel like this should be black, but you tell me what you think. I'm thinking black with maybe a white dry brush. You tell me what color you think my frame should be. Hey, and Deb in Minnesota, and there's Bryce in Moorhead. Angie's here from Connecticut. First time watching. Thank you for watching, Angie. I grew up in Boston, Massachusetts. So hello in Connecticut. I've got family all over Boston. A brother in New Hampshire. So we are um, East Coast people. Yes, Connie. She said, what color are you doing the frame? That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> what color? Yes, very happy colors, Jenna. So I don't want to take away from all this color that I get going here. My flower on the bottom is black with a white polka dot. That's why I'm thinking this black and white, right? I think black is, will black be too stark? If I do it all black, is it going to be too dark? Do you think I should do white? You tell me. I'm, I'm looking for some input, girls. Black so it pops. Carla, that, you know, I'm kind of thinking black. I don't know. Tracy says 126. That means I need to pull another name. So everybody, 127, Jessica. Can you believe it? What? Shut the front door. I'm so happy to have all this company. I'm pulling another name. And it's Barb. Oh, gosh, Barb. Hold on a minute, dear. All the Barbs are like, what's the last name? I have to spell it out, and I'm going to show it to you. I hope I spell it correctly. I hope it's say it correctly. Barb, the comment that's getting you in the prize basket is bottom. You told me to put the blue on the bottom. It's Barb Schellheimer. I hope I said that right, Barb. I gave it my best attempt. Hey, whoever gave me stars, this is totally new to me. So thank you. Thank you. I'm looking up and I can see on this camera where I'm broadcasting from that I got a hundred stars. I can't see it on this one, but I can see it up there. Thank you to whoever sent me some stars. It's kind of like a little tip jar. 
Each star is worth a penny and you can buy them from Facebook and then give them to um, anybody who's giving you a live demonstration that you appreciate or that, you know, you got value from. It's your way of saying thanks. Black Stain, June says. Lori says navy. She wants to put a whole nother color in here. You little cheeky monkey, as my coach would say. <laughs> you cheeky monkey. Black with a white dry brush. That's what I'm thinking, Joyce. Deb says black with a dry brush, white edges to soften the edges. Watered down black or something with a white wash. Gray, dark, so not so stark. Paint black and then see if you like the white. Black might be too much by itself. That's what I'm thinking. I think we need black in here somewhere. So I'm going to go with the black. Now let me see. I had pulled out my black. That was kind of what I was thinking originally. So uh, this is almost empty. I have that. So Waverly ink is a great black, but it is like ink. It is stark. It would match perfectly the black flower, but is it going to be too much for all these other bright colors that we have? That's my worry. So somebody said use a gray, and I love that idea. So let me pull a couple of the grays that I have on hand. This, um, here are the grays that I have on hand, right? I, it doesn't matter. The name doesn't matter. The brand doesn't matter. I'm looking at the color tone. And I like this idea because I could dry brush black or white on it and it's not so stark. I'm going to put a little bit of the elephant. This is my favorite gray and I'm almost out. Um, but I, I have enough in there probably. <laughs> it's down to, I won't throw it out. It's down to the bottom. I need another jar of this. I'm going to get a long paintbrush. I'm going to dip it in here and get a little, it's really thick paint down there. Um, I'm just going to put a little gray on here. I'm going to take my guy out because I don't want paint on him. I'm going to put a little gray and we're going to decide. So this is okay to do, you guys. You don't have to know exactly. You're going to figure it out as you go as the piece comes together. Okay, there's gray. And let me put just a tish of the black somewhere. This is what I do, you guys. This is how I get it together. Now I'm using the same brush. <laughs> I'm just using the same brush. I, I'm just trying to decide. Do we want black? This isn't even stark black because I got the gray mixed in there. Let me get more black paint from then from like I got it from the you saw me take it from the lid. It was too there wasn't enough of it. Let's just go for it because we can always cover it up. I think I like it darker, you guys. I think I like the dark side. I like the dark side, because look at what the flower, right? We got this black, black flower. I like the dark one. I'm going dark. I made my mind up. I, I so appreciate it, and I always ask. When I do lives, I make them very interactive, because I really, truly, it's like sitting in a room with your girlfriends at like a retreat, like a scrapbooking retreat or crafting retreat, and saying, Martha, what would you do? And Martha says, I still say use black. <laughs> I love it, Martha. Martha Winkin, that's awesome. Kathy says use gray. Angie says black. Hey, Ellen in Georgia. We're having a conversation, girlfriend, about which color. Deborah says dry brush and blue. You girls, I know I love your opinion, but still, I, I think I like the black. Let's do a little more black on here. Ooh, it's stark, but maybe because I've got some gray mixed in, it won't be so stark, right? I'm not loving this paintbrush. It's too stiff for me or something for this paint. Look at, I'm getting like a blended gray and black here. And I actually, that's not bad. The, these birch woods and these palette boards, they just suck up paint, guys. They suck up the paint, right? I'm not gonna spray this because it's too small of a surface. I'm gonna dip my brush in a little bit of water to just pick up a little water to make this paint spread a little more easily. So that's another way that you can deal with wood when you're painting on it. Just dip your brush, brush bristles, try to say that fast, dip it in the paint. Right now, my big concern is getting it completely covered with paint. I'm gonna go over it again with more paint in the color that I choose because um, then I'll get the color right. All right, look at that stark black. That is stark black. Now I got the black. In here, I had a lot of gray mixed in. I'm trying not to hit the edges. I want to leave the edges raw. I don't know why. That's just kind of the thing I do. You can paint them if you want. I don't. I don't usually do that. Look at, um, here's why. I got a palette board. It's clearly a palette board. It's thick. 
The palette board edges are natural. The edges of my frame will be natural and it'll all match. There is a method to my madness. All right, my kids would say, stop singing, mom. We got a little light gray here and we got the dark black here. Look, 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 look. We got our flower and we got our flower. I'm going with black. You guys, I like it. I like it a lot. We're gonna put this aside. We're gonna put this aside. I'm gonna get my little craft mat out here where I, I, cause I don't care if it gets paint all over it. And I'm gonna grab some black paint and we're going with the black. Now listen, I'm gonna get this painted. And if we get it on there and we're like, oh no, Grace, you ruined it. <laughs> like we don't like it. It's all good because we can we can layer on gray, we can layer on some white, we can dry brush. I actually planned on stamping it. I haven't told you that yet, but my plan was to use, not stamping, a stencil. Well, I could stamp too. I have some stamps I could use. And I've usually, I have stamped these little frames before, but I have pulled out some stencils that might be cool. I have not decided yet. Wow, this, it's incredible how these just suck the paint up, like suck it up. So by wetting my brush, it really helps it to spread more easily. Because there's a lot of paint on here. It's just sitting on the top rather than spreading. Okay, I'm adding water so I can get some of this paint that's over here to thin out a little bit and use it over here. And actually you guys, for the few of you that said use a dark stain, this you could use your paints to create a stain just by adding water to them, a lot of water, but you can create a stain instead of a, a dark painted finish. So because I'm wetting my brush, I'm getting a little bit of that too, um, but it, it's gonna give it less of a deep, deep, deep contrast. Listen, here's the good news. You got so many options, <laughs> right? As you decide what you're gonna do with your project, just know the options are endless. And I do, I, you know, I, I kind of play with it and see, I'm not sure, I didn't know if I wanted gray, I didn't know if I wanted white. I kind of thought I wanted black, but I wasn't sure. So it's okay to put a little gray on it first and then put a little black on it, just like I did, to see which do you like more. I like this paint thinned out more than I like it. It's really thick up here. So I'm gonna grab a little more paint, well, water on my paintbrush, and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna try to thin this out a little bit. Now remember, this is where I had, I'm trying to hold this in place, and my hand's too little to like spam. No, I can do it this way. Um, remember, I had that gray underneath here. So we started with a little bit of the gray paint, the elephant, and now it has black on top of it, and I'm trying to just make it a little bit more watered down. Not quite a wash, but just thin enough so it'll spread easily. There, we got it. Okay, now we, we can decide. We can keep going and we can keep making our mind up as we go. My palette board with the Mod Podge is still drying over there. So while that's drying, we're working on this part of it. Now I think I'll put the button on, I think I'm gonna put a button on my flower. So we'll work on that while this dries and then we're gonna start putting it all together. Okay, what do you think so far? Show me some hearts, show me some likes, what do you think? Melissa says, oh, hey, Melissa Taylor. She's, Melissa's the one doing the um, Daisy the Cow, you guys, she's here visiting. Kim says, don't use gray. <laughs> Diane says, can you put white dots on the black? You could totally do that. You could totally do that if you wanted it to match your fabric for your flower. Do it, go for it. Black and white dots, Shelly says she likes that. You can totally dry brush gray over black. It does work, Martha, it does work. It's just like using white, except you're using gray. You, yes. Oh, Angie, thank you. She says, Grace is my favorite name. It's my grandmother's name, my dad's mother's name. In Italian, she's actually Graziella but I'm Grace, <laughs> to each his own. But I'm wondering, why have you added the flower to your son's picture on a boat? Because I think it's cute. I think it's cute and I love the little flower. It's cheerful. Flowers remind me of spring and summer. I have a lot of joy making the flowers. It's it, these, I um, love making them. This is a great waiting room thing to do. Like when my kids are at their activities when they were very young, um, and you didn't just drop them off, you actually sat and watched them. This is what I would do. I have bags 
of flowers that I have created. So they just make me happy. So that's why I'm putting it on there. <laughs> but you, you, yeah, you, Lisa, you, if you don't, that's my whole point. If you don't like flowers, do whatever you like. Do whatever you like. Can you put white dots on the black? I love your, I love, love, love when you guys make all these suggestions. I love it, love it. Kim, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So this is, I, I have a really good idea of what I want to do. I want it to be whimsical. I want it to be fun. She's asking, what am I going to stencil on here? I'm not sure if I even am yet. I kind of, once I start getting things in place, I start piecing it together and then I make the decision. Does that make sense? Um, that's just how I work. I kind of give you like a little <laughs> view into the way my mind works as I put these things together. Okay, so he's gonna be sitting here. I think we did a really good job matching the paints with the picture, okay? I really love, it's really stark, you guys, but I love the black. I love it. Now we need to decide. I pulled out my stencils, some of my small ones, thinking maybe I would want to stencil something on here, but I'll tell you what. As I'm looking at this all together and we have the pattern of the, the yellow paper has the little circles on it. Um, it's the same that I used to make this flower. I don't know if you can see the little circles, okay? These coordinate, they're the same fabric. And then we have the polka dots, which are whimsical and fun, right? Black, black. The yellow is going to be on top, so it's going to brighten up this black flower. It's going to make it dimensional, right? Um, so you don't have this dimensional frame sitting here and then a flat you know, you could use a sticker or decoupage a little flat paper flower on there, but I like the fabric one because it pops off of the, the board, right? Um, I was going, I was considering, I pulled them out with the stencils, but I don't think I'm gonna use them. As I'm looking at this from far away, every once in a while, I'll pull your face away from your project, and as you're looking at it from far away, I actually think a dry brush would be really nice so I'm gonna play with dry brushing it, okay? I'm gonna take the dryer to it for a second because it's still wet. We're gonna dry brush a little, and listen, if I dry brush on it and I don't like it, I can just paint over the dry brush with the black again. I really love the black. I wasn't sure, I was thinking it might be a little too stark, but it's okay to put it on there and change your mind. Totally okay to do that. Listen, that actually can keep drying while I work on this flower. Now, the fabric flowers, I love to layer them. Um, you use, a, a, the, this is the free tutorial. If you want the free tutorial, just click on that link, sign up for it. I'm going to send it to everybody tomorrow. Now, I have a bucket full of, like, embellishments here. Um, and some of the embellishments that I have, I have sticky buttons that can go, like a sticky button can go in the middle of the flower. Totally wrong color. I have bags of buttons. Anybody else have bags of buttons uh, in their craft room? Um, so I could come in here and find different little buttons. It needs to coordinate. That doesn't coordinate. Plain white would, if I dry brush white on here, the plain white would be perfect. Cuteness, right? Uh, what other, if I had a black maybe, to bring the black back in? We could do that. So I'm gonna pull out a couple of options. Here's how I work, you guys. I'm just showing you. Um, you can, this one is marbled white. That one's really stark plain white, so that's an option. If you like blingy things, maybe you want something that's sparkly. You could, like, I could totally pull in the blue or the green, so here's a blue button. This is what I do. I lay it down and I say, nope, I don't like the blue. I know I don't like the blue. I like the black and I like the white, so I'm gonna keep those ones out. You could be totally weird whimsical here. I'm gonna show you something funny. Let me see if I can find one. Because I just have a, a box of like embellishments here. This would be just funky and whimsical. Again, it's a little white. I have a bag of white pom-poms. <laughs> You could put that there. It looks too much like a cotton ball to me. So no, like I just take out all the things that I have and I play with them until I figure it out. It's gonna be either the white or black button. That was easy. I'm gonna dry brush though some, some of the white on there to see if I like that. I think I am going to like it and I think that's why the white button might be perfect, but we'll see. Let's hot glue this together. Here's what I do for my 
my flowers. I have the black flower. I'm just going to add some hot glue to the right on the fabric here. I just need to get this pushed down onto here. I don't like to melt my fingertips, so I use like a plastic knife or a silicone works really well to get these connected to each other. And you want to make sure it's centered. I want the, the petals to all be showing well. And um, because it's fabric and not paper, it, um, I, got, I got to get that glue off my hand. It's like a string of glue. The more you push it in the middle, and maybe that works with paper too, but the more the sides pop up so that you get this like dimension to it, which I like. Okay. This is going to get hot glue gunned here eventually. The other thing you can do, and I do a lot, is use um, glue dots that are temporary so that if you want to pull stuff off of here um, and redo it later, um, I use temporary adhesives, and I forgot to grab one of them, so let me grab it. Hold on, you guys. All right, you guys, my temporary adhesive, where the heck did it go? Oh, wait a minute. I'm looking for it. You guys just hang tight for a minute. I'll be right back. I gotta go grab it. So the other adhesive that I use, I'm so sorry, you guys. I know, no one likes dead air time. The other adhesive that I use a lot when I want to replace something, like take it off and put it back, is this stuff, adhesive tape, that is Velcro. So that's what we're going to use on the back of the frame so that if I ever want to pull this up and change out the picture as he gets older, maybe I'll have a picture, like my sister-in-law sent me this picture today, and I was debating using that. That's him with my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, their new puppy. <laughs> they just got a puppy a couple of months ago. That's their new puppy. So maybe I would wanna change this out to that. I like to use um, temporary adhesive. So temporary glue dots is one. And in the Crafty Chicks Club, we're doing a little DIY shelf sitter and I'm sending everybody a roll of 100 um, temporary glue dots. I use them all the time. Another good one is this stuff. Now this will be permanent on the boards, but what it allows me to do because it's a Velcro is pull this up and change out the picture, which is what I would wanna do, right? As the kids get older. Okay, Kim says, you have cool embellishments. The bag of flowers in the video the other day is the one I'm searching for. You stenciled a wreath and added navy and mustard flowers to it, and I absolutely loved it. I'm glad you absolutely loved it. I'm giving that away, Kim. Um, and I, I invited everybody into the Crafty Chicks Club and I'm giving that project away to someone randomly in that group who commented on the picture in my Crafty Chicks Club. It's a free craft community. So if you didn't get in there, get in there. I have not pulled the name yet and I apologize. I told you guys I would do that yesterday and the day got away from me. So join my Crafty Chicks Club. It's a free group here on Facebook. The... Um, Link to it is above in the description of this video. And it's, those are just, you guys, I, I'll put them in my Amazon store. I'll put those flowers in my Amazon store. Where are my flowers? They're up there. They're paper flowers and they're from Sola, S-O-L-A, Sola Flowers. That's it. I got them from Sola Flowers. They have a variety, but I will put them in my Amazon store just to make it easier for you guys. Um, let's dry brush a little bit here. Right now I'm going back and forth. So I've got these glued together. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do white or black, but part of that decision hinges on whether or not I want to keep the dry brushing or not. So I'm gonna get my little tin foil out here. This is what I used for the Craft Therapy Club last night. As you know, this is what I use for my palette, this tin foil, because it's so easy. I'm gonna put a little white paint on here. I'm gonna get um, a smaller brush. I want a flat brush that I can dry brush with. Here's one. Okay, and it needs to be smaller because it's this is just a really skinny slat of wood here. We're gonna dry brush a little bit of white on here and see, and you guys can tell me, dry brush or not. 
you can tell me in the comments. You can say dry brush or you can say not. <laughs> you tell me what you think. Here we go. It's not completely dry. It's almost dry. Now dry brushing, you, you, I, I can explain it to you quick. Here's my, here's my well of paint, my little supply of paint. I wet the brush. I offload, I call this the land of offload. I offload most of the paint from the brush so that my brush looks dry. There's no wetness, there's no goopiness, there's nothing glistening, that's called a dry brush. Then you lightly drag it over your project to create this look, okay? Dry brush or no dry brush. I can even go a little brighter. So if, if it's too, if it's not bright enough for you, go in and reload your brush with a dry paint, like a dry amount of paint, meaning not a lot, and then come back and see how I'm making that dry brush brighter. Yes, dry brush. No, don't dry brush. I want your vote. I'm, def I'm forming my own opinion. I'm staring at it right now, you guys, <laughs> and forming my own opinion. Here's what I like about dry brush. You're getting my whole thought process here, you guys. Oh, sharing all of that with you. So when you do a plain paint color and you try to get a solid coat of paint on, it's really tough to do, um, especially on like these birch woods. It's not a canvas, so this birch wood. It's not a perfect paint coat. And it's really challenging to get it perfect. You can see a little bit of the wood coming through here. Um, so it's really challenging to get it perfect. A dry brush like kind of covers up. It's not meant to be perfectly applied. It's meant to have some variation to it. I like the dry brush, you guys. Let me see. Ernest says no, Teresa says no. Renee says no. Debbie says no. <laughs> Kathy says no. Terry says dry brush. Martha says no. Connie says just do the edges. I don't want, the, so Joyce is asking, would the dots be too much to match the bar? I think they would be too much. I think the dots would be too much. That's why I haven't, I didn't really consider putting them on because I already have the dots in the flower and I don't want to compete with that. All right, let's try what Connie said. She said just do the edges. Now listen, I don't like it. I can paint right over it, right? It's not, not a big deal. Just the edges. Connie, I like it. <laughs> I like it. I like what Connie said. I like it. I'm going to get my black paintbrush out. I'm going to get my black paint. I'm going to cover up. I, I know immediately by looking at it, I like it. I'm going to cover this back up. It's not hard to do. I just took the same brush that I already had black paint on. I put a little paint on it and we're going to cover up the black or the dry brush, I mean, and then I'm going to go over this again with just the edging. Okay. Now, now's the time. If you have anything that didn't get covered, I wasn't sure if I was going to stamp on it, if I was going to stencil on it. I decided not with the stencils. I decided not with the stamps. So then I thought dry brushing. You have so many options, you guys. That's what I hope you're taking away from today is that the options are limitless and there's no right or wrong answer. Whatever you choose to do is what you should do. And don't let anybody discourage you. If you have a certain style or look that you're going for, you do it. You do you, girl. You do you. <laughs> Connie says I feel important now. Well, my dear, of course you're important. Of course you are. Oh, May Co. Abby. That's your name, and it's very pretty. May, thank you for saying it. She says, first time watching, and I love it. Welcome, Miss May. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. I've got a couple of little spots. They're probably going to get dry brushed with white, but I just want to make sure if we're going with a solid finish, Really look it over because when the light hits it, you're going to have like, oh, I missed a spot. You're going to really see it. Okay. Now I am going to dry brush the edges as Connie recommended. Brilliant Connie. Now we can decide and we can do the flower. I think the white 
is going to be better. The black makes the, the flower kind of get lost. I think we're going to do white so I can put this button aside because it's going to pull in the white from the dry brushing. And I actually like, they're both white, but one has a marbled look and the other one has a solid white and it's whimsical and fun. This one's kind of classic looking. I don't know. Those are the words I use to describe. I'm going to use the whimsical, fun, bright white one. I can do this while my paint's drying. I'm just gonna put glue along the inside rid, rim of the middle of this flower. It's gonna sit right on the edges here and I don't want a ton of glue poking out. I got a little more than I wanted here so I'm gonna scrape it in and then push the button down. I don't want a ton of glue popping out. I'm gonna show you a trick. I got blue glue popping out right there. Can you see that glue right there? I don't want that there. See, I don't want that. It looks like it was made, um, you know, I don't know. It just looks like it was made on a manufacturing plant and someone didn't take the care to take care of it. While it's still drying, but not super hot, you can take like, see how it's getting kind of rubbery? Take an X-Acto knife and cut off that little blob of glue that oozed out onto your flower. I don't want blobs of glue. I just want the flower. This is the free tutorial. How to sew these together, that's the free tutorial. So you can make your own embellishments. You could buy embellishments from a store. You will never find the same fabric. <laughs> I used the same fabric there that I did on this flower. They coordinate. That was on purpose, right? Because I wanted them to coordinate. I'm gonna go ahead and dry brush the rest of the edges of my frame and then I'm gonna do the Velcro on there and we are done. We are done. I'm gonna show you this, like a million ways you can interpret this, you guys. Let's dry brush these edges. I'm going a little wide and actually because the edges of this frame have that scroll design, I feel like it's kind of highlighting that and really making that show up. So listen, somebody asked me, I don't remember what your name is, so I apologize. Oh, who asked me? I don't remember who it was. Asked me, why are you putting a flower on a picture that has your boy, your son in a boat? And I get the question because he's a boy and because um, he's in a boat, like how does the flower come in? Um, I don't know, I like it, that's how it comes in. <laughs> I'm not trying to be fresh. <laughs> I'm not trying to be fresh, I'm just saying, cause I like it. I think it's super cute together. Now listen, it kind of reminds me of the moms. Now I don't have girls, I have boys. Although one day my son came out, he was about eight years old. And I said, go get ready for church, wear a nice shirt. And I want you to wear nice pants, like go get ready for church. And he went running in, it was like springtime. And he came out <laughs> of his room. <laughs> Listen, he came out of his room with camo shorts on that were cotton pull-ups. They weren't like gym shorts. They weren't basketball shorts, like the athletic shorts. They were to him dressy because they were like a canvas material, cotton material. So he had camo bottoms on and he had on a, an adorable button up, so dressy button up shirt with collars and a little pocket. Um, and that was like a red plaid. It was like red, green, black, white. I'm not quite sure, but it was a plaid top button with the camo bottoms. And he came out of his room and he said, how does this look? Because I told him to go get dressed for church and wear his dressier clothes. So he picked probably what he thought was the nicest pair of shorts and the nicest shirt that he had without any consideration for <laughs> the patterns and the colors. <laughs> I think I giggled out loud. Am I a bad mom? He came out and I, like I'm cry laughing right now. And I giggled. I was like, oh. I said, oh, buddy, I said, I love those shorts and I love that shirt, but I'm not sure that those two go together real good. And he was like, what do you mean? And so we talked about, we went into his room and I said, okay, if you're going to pick like a, a, like a camel bottom, you would probably want like a solid top, but matching color. And if you're going to pick those, that shirt, which I love, you probably want to pick like a solid black pair of shorts or something. So we went through that whole thing and I taught him that, but listen. This kind of reminds me of that. Why are you putting a flower on the, on the, um, this project with your kid's picture? I, Cause I like it. 
<laughs> don't take a kid's mojo away. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like, you do you. You do you. I actually, when I first did this, I actually was planning three flowers, three fabric flowers, one on each panel. And then I felt like it was just too much. It was just too much. So I thought, no, just one really pretty flower will be fine. But listen, I just tell you that funny story because it reminds me of that. Like it's, I had to stop the child from going to church in those clothes. I did because that's my job as a mom. But yes, and Joy says, kids are so special. Memories kept in your heart forever. Exactly, right? Right? And it's, it, it's my, my, my point though is when we're creating and when we're craf crafting and creating, like I told I always tell the craft therapy club members too, um, my paid membership group. I, you know, I tell everybody on every live that I do, every workshop, I do virtual workshops. I think I'm going to do a camper coming up, a camper painting workshop, a really whimsical camper. Uh-oh, too much paint. Um, every time I do one of those, here's what I'm going to do. I got to recover, girls, too much paint. I rinsed my brush in water. I'm going to dry it off here. It's too much just in that one spot. I just did too much. It's okay. I rinsed it off because I had too much white paint getting into the bristles there and it wasn't dry so much. I'm going to come in with my black paintbrush. I'll tell you the rest of what I was saying in a minute here. And almost like a dry brush, I'm going to dry brush back over it with the, the foundation color, that black that's underneath. Now, if I go over, it's okay because it's going to match the back once it dries, but I need to, I need to cover up that I just put too much right there. Just a little too aggressive. Um, anyway, I always want you to walk away from a workshop that I teach, one of my um, crafting, whether you're in the free Crafty Chicks Club, um, that little group that I have online here or on Facebook, or if you're in the paid membership group, I'm trying to mimic, you guys, the shape of the edges. I'm trying to mimic the shape. Um, it, regardless of what group you belong to, when you talk to me, and we're talking crafting, I'm going to tell you, you do you. You do you. You want to put polka dots on your frame? Put polka dots on your frame. I'm not feeling the polka dots. So I'm going to do, I like Connie's idea with this dry brushing. Listen, you can always change your mind and do it over again. Um, but I really, really encourage you to do what makes your heart happy. Um, I need to take this little plastic thing off here. We're going to Velcro this down pretty quick here. Um, so I'm going to stick his pop this photo in here it's just one of those cheap birch frames i think it was a buck right so we can totally it comes with a wood dowel that you can stick in these little holes and then it can sit like as like up either direction horizontal or landscape but i'm not going to use the dowel i'm going to i'm going to velcro it right here so that i can take it off Let's do the same with the flowers. So we're going to get into our Velcro. This, I think, is in my Amazon store, too. This stuff is brilliant. Um, you get two rolls. One is the knobby side or whatever, like the one is the soft side and one is the, the, the more plasticky side. But you get two rolls. You need a top and a bottom. Let's see. That's the soft one, just a little scrap that I had. I'm not going to need a lot, so watch. Watch, watch me. You're just going to need a little tiny piece of this. You know how long that roll is going to last you? I just need little tiny pieces of this, and I'm going to stick part of it, and it's extremely sticky. I'm going to stick part of it on the back of my fabric flower, like that. I'm going to stick... I get that on there first, and then... You can put this right on top so you know how it's going to, when you place it, it's the placement's going to be right. So you put the other half of that Velcro on there. you got to get the backing off, which, guys, like I said, this stuff is incredibly, incredibly adhesive. I like using this stuff when I want to have the option of switching things out. So if I ever want to change this flower out, look at look how sticky that is. Um, I'm going to stick this down here. I'm going to push really hard. I'm going to do the same thing to the frame in a minute here, guys. Now, hopefully that's stuck on there real good. Look at interchangeable. Interchangeable embellishments. <laughs> so you can do that. I love using temporary embellishments. I love it. Okay. I want to change this picture out at some point, maybe. So same thing on the back of this. I'm going to put... You need to cut it down so it's not too big, right? 
but it needs to be big enough to hold it in place. This stuff is really adhesive. So I actually, I don't know why, but I like to put this part, um, let me do this. I'm just trying to cut it the same size. I don't know why, but I like to put the scratchy part on the bottom of the project. <laughs> I don't think it really matters, but you just need matching sides so that you can stick them together, okay? And you're gonna put one side. I always, like when I'm doing something like this, it's easier if you put the Velcro on your embellishment first. I'm trying to get that sticky backing off, you guys. It's real, it really sticks on there. So just give me a second. It's better if you're gonna do this to put your Velcro on the, the piece that you're placing and then flip it and stick it down and press real hard. And this stuff sticks well enough that when you wanna pull it off, you totally can. All right, hold on, why can't I get this, the backer off of this? Because I have no nails, that's why. You know what would work too? Uh, where's my X-Acto knife? Like if you really struggle to get your like fingernail in there, let's try this. There we go. I think I got it. Let me check comments and questions. You're welcome, Tracy. She says, thanks for the great idea. Yeah, this, I love double-sided Velcro. All right, I got the sticky off of that. I still have this covered. I'm gonna put it right, I'm not gonna put it on the staple because I don't want the staple to interfere with its stickiness, press really hard. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I've got my two sides, they're, they're stuck together. The top and the bottom are stuck together. They both have an adhesive on the back. So same process. We're gonna, I'm gonna see if I can more easily peel this up with the X-Acto because my nails just aren't cutting it, girls. There we go, got it. There, there's another tip for you. <laughs> Use your X-Acto to wiggle that out of there. Okay, it's just the one side that's really hard to do. I'm gonna stick it here. You don't want it seen anywhere. So just stick it you know, somewhere where it's not gonna be seen. You don't want it sticking out. Sorry for the long delay. This is really, truly, can we say that the Velcro has been the hardest part of this whole project? <laughs> oh, I have such little patience for stuff like this. It's like, come on, it's just a piece of Velcro. And you just gotta, you gotta persist and just show it. You're not the boss of me, man. Velcro, you're not the boss of me. Okay, here we go. If you wanna hang it, I should have done that a long time ago. I'm still making sure that my hangers are in the right place. I'm gonna try to get right above this. So my placement's good. I think the two Velcros are gonna be enough to push this down. It's kind of like a glue dot too, because it makes the, uh, the, what you're putting on top of your board, it makes it pop a little like those foam glue dot, um, glue dots that you can use, or those mounting strips that are foam, except this one is Velcro. So now, oh, this one didn't stick. This, oh, I forgot to, it didn't, I didn't take it off. That's why it didn't stick. Look, I forgot to take it off. Okay, I know where I want it. This is why it's easier to put the two sides together and then stick it on your board. I just forgot to take that other side off. Look. Okay, first of all, we're almost done, you guys. Hold on, we're almost done. Look, 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 look. It's staying in place. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere, but look, if you wanna take it off, voila, I can change out my picture. Right, so he's a, a couple years older, but I still love the frame and I still wanna keep it and it matches my decor. I love interchangeable. <laughs> home decor. I love it. Okay, let me get this back on here. It doesn't really take a lot. You just want to line up those two spots again. You press it on and voila, there you go. You can switch it out. This would make a great gift too for somebody. Like um, maybe your kids have a child, you have a grandchild and you know, baby pictures, they change so quickly in the first year or two of life. So you want to change these pictures out often. It's an easy way to do it. And you do you. Like if you don't like my color scheme, don't use this color scheme. Use whatever you like. If you don't want to use fabric to decoupage, then use paper, use gift wrap, use tissue wrap. You don't like the flower? Totally cool. I'm not offended by that at all. It's just you have different tastes than me. I don't see that as a bad thing. I just think we can learn from each other by sharing each other's projects. That's what's really fun about this craft therapy club. We're all doing a mermaid this month. 
There's over 40 of us in that group. We're all doing a mermaid, but when everybody shares their mermaids, they're all gonna look completely different. The first person that shared her mermaid, she did not do it on a canvas panel. She did it on a palette board like this, but a really big one, and it's fantastic. It looks nothing like mine. She still has a mermaid tail, but it looks nothing like mine, and I love it, I love it. Okay, um, let's see, where are we? Thank you, I'm glad you think it's so cute. The frame, um, this frame is actually from Crafts Direct, but Walmart does carry these types of frames where it's like the three palette boards. Um, I think the Walmart ones, it's, they, they still have, this is a 12 by 12 um, board and they still, they have 12 by 12 palette boards at Walmart. So you can get this same type. I'm not sure that it's the same. In fact, I know it's not the same brand. This is SPC. Yes, this one is SPC. I got it at Crafts Direct. Um, and Walmart carries that jelly. I think it's called Jelly Bean is the brand, I think, I think. So you guys, and look at, if you, so say you have this up for a week and you're like, man, I don't think I like that black frame. Take it down. Now you can take it down, take the photo out of it and repaint the frame in whatever color you want. Like somebody said navy. So maybe I'll decide in a week I want navy. <laughs> it's okay to change your mind. Listen, seven days of fun. Let me tell you who's coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow is the um, 19th. So Sarah Cohn from Art Ventures Minnesota, that's the name of her business. She's gonna be doing a watercolor freeform flower and she has a free template for you guys. There's a free gift every day with the seven, day, um, seven days of creative fun. On the 20th, it's Melissa Taylor, Miss Melissa McFadden Taylor, my friend Melissa from the Graceful Barn, and she's going to be painting Daisy the Cow, and she's giving you the template for Daisy. So join them. I will post again this afternoon. I will post the full schedule so that if you want to go back and get each creative business owner, they're giving you a free gift. If you want to go back and get all those free gifts, you can sign up for them. It's really easy. The free gift that I'm giving you is how to create these little flowers, um, how to sew one flower so that you can then create bunches of them and combine them and customize them for your projects. So you guys, thanks for joining me. Thanks for being here. It's Saturday morning, oh, close to afternoon. Well, for some of you, it might be afternoon. So I hope you have a beautiful day. Let me just check quick. First time watching, Zena says, I missed the beginning. How did you make the flower? You can sign up for a free tutorial. Um, where I show you how to make the flower, okay? And you absolutely, this this video, when I'm done, when I hit the, the, the live feed done, um, you're gonna get this video recording is gonna stay here on the page. So you can watch the video again in a minute here, Zena, and um, I will post one more time in the comments here, the link so that if you wanna grab the video tutorial on how to make those flowers, you can do that. Let me see if I can, come on. Uh-oh, it's not letting me do it. I have the link in the comments if you scroll back it's also in the description of this video so you guys can grab it there I'm trying really hard and it's not letting me, it's not letting me comment it's not letting me add it one more try nope it's gone won't let me do it sorry about that Zena just look at the the description of the video when I'm done you have a beautiful day Brenda you're welcome Carla thanks to all you guys for tuning in um, take care have a blessed day bye